Hi, welcome to Eckhart Public Library in Auburn, Indiana. And this is a tour which we've titled Hidden in Plain Sight. We're going to show you today some of the beautiful pieces of artwork, 2D and 3D, that are in the Eckhart Public Library for all to enjoy. So let me start the tour. Our first painting is an impressionistic landscape done by William Terman. He was from Indiana. He was from Sullivan County, Indiana. He painted with oils and he was also a professor of penmanship and drawing at what is now known as Indiana State University. He had um, a gallery there named after him, the Terman Gallery, and his landscapes of Brown County and Wabash Valley still hang in the Terman Gallery at Indiana State University. He is often acknowledged to be the Dean of the Wabash Valley Artists, which is very important in Indiana. His paintings reside in many public buildings and private collections in Indiana. Number two on our tour is also a landscape, but of a different type. It's the Northern Sea Coast. It was done by Dwight Steininger. He had no formal art training, um, so he is self-taught, which is an interesting part of his career. He moved to Brown County in 1955, so he was part of, on the fringes of the Brown County Artist Group. He studied briefly with C. Curry Baum, who was a very famous um, artist in Nashville, Indiana, and he was also the Dean of the Brown County Artists, and it was estimated that Steininger drew over 10,000 colored chalk pictures he was also an evangelist who served um, in his ministry coast to coast, so he had a lot of states that he visited and was able to take um, a lot of his inspiration from the scenes that he saw. This portrait of Leo Tolstoy, the famous Russian author of War and Peace and Anna Karenina, and other novels of note, was donated to the Eckhart Public Library by Robert Sparge. Robert's father brought this picture to America when he fled Kiev, Russia. Samuel was 16 at the time that he entered America. In this portrait, there are pen strokes. The pen strokes are lines from the novel Anna Karenina. There will be a magnifying glass posted close to this, so you can look at this yourself up close. It's very unique. It's signed by a C. Zazier, an artist of which very little is known. The family believes the portrait was done sometime within the late 1800s. They gifted this portrait to Eckhart Public Library, stating its importance of having all generations being able to view. This beautiful oil landscape is by James Eccles, a native of Chicago, and he studied at the Academy of Fine Arts there. His art was really his lifelong hobby, and he became very enamored of art after his retirement, and that became his new occupation. His interest in art gave him the ability to travel and find pieces to sketch for his paintings. He was a Brown County painter. He went to the West Indies. He went to British Guiana, Venezuela, and even the Orient to make paintings. He was a member of the Hoosier Salon in Indianapolis, and he exhibited in Chicago at the Palette and Chisel Club. James Eccles died in Oak Park, Illinois in 1983. This painting is titled, Early Snow. This pastel by Andrew Severin Gunderson is untitled, but for me it's reminiscent of Monet's wheat stacks, and that's what you're seeing in his beautiful landscape. He was considered a professional artist at the young age of 15. He had his own studio when he was 18, and he also owned an art store. He had a unique take on pricing art, intentionally pricing his pictures low, because he thought everybody needed beauty in their lives. Gunderson's pictures are mostly landscapes, but some are life and seascapes. Interestingly enough, the pictures are not of places that actually exist, but taken from his imagination. The fact that I like about Gunderson is that he mixed his colors himself and he came up with a formula of pastels that was softer than the commercial formulas that he could buy at a store. 
He then coated a thin paste and grit mixture to achieve just the right texture. He always signed his artwork. There are no unsigned pastels by Gunderson. Andrew Van Horn's pieces are titled Stained Glass Windows. They're watercolors created and donated to the Eckhart Public Library in memory of Doris Longden. She produced a smaller stained glass window watercolors for all the major donors to the library expansion. Van Horn became a faithful friend and a patron of Eckhart Public Library. She studied at John Heron Art School in Indianapolis, and she taught art at DeKalb Central High School for 20 years, mostly teaching drawing and painting. Van Horn's other pieces hang in departments of the library for all to enjoy. Ruth Kiernan Mayfield was a lifetime Auburn resident and a graduate of Auburn High School. She worked for Eckert Public Library for 27 years, holding various positions prior to becoming the head librarian in 1944. She had an interest and a talent in painting, especially in painting watercolors. It is not certain when she donated these two paintings to the Eckert Public Library, but we're focusing on the one with the pier and the boat. Mrs. Mayfield gave the framing and the two pictures to the library in 1961. Louis Bonzup was also an Indiana native born in Vincennes. He took a position in Indianapolis at an engraving company and an advertising company and eventually set up his own shop. He later moved to Fort Wayne. Although advertising was very successful for him, he continued to paint using oils and watercolors. This beautiful oil is springtime in Brown County, which was one of his favorite places to paint. The Hoosier Salon, renowned in Indiana, exhibited his work. The New Harmony Gallery, Chicago, and Broad Ripple are some of the places where his paintings have been shown. His paintings hang in many collections, such as the one at First Presbyterian Church in Fort Wayne, and also many private homes. His pieces are highly collectible, and Bonsev also served as a board member at IU in Bloomington. He chose to donate the major portion of his library of over 200 books to his alma mater, Vincennes University, along with hundreds of his paintings. There's even a room dedicated to Louis Bonsev in the university. Rebecca Justice Schaub is a visual artist who works on plein air and in her studio in Auburn, Indiana. Rebecca challenges herself to tell a story using color brush strokes with oil paints. Rebecca has painted in the courtyard at Eckert Public Library many times, but she knew that she wanted to return and document an important historical site for DeKalb County, which is the fountain, the lovely Eckert Public Library fountain located on the west side of the library in Auburn. Charles Eckert, founder of the library, donated this fountain in 1912 and Rebecca has certainly done it a very good job of making the fountain look at just as beautiful as it is. Clifton Wheeler was an American Impressionistic artist from Hadley, Indiana. He studied privately with William Forsythe and they often went on sketching trips to the countryside of southern Indiana. In 1902, he began studying at the New York School of Art and it's very important to know that he studied with very notable artists such as William Merritt Chase, Robert Henri, and Rockwell Kent. Wheeler was a member of the Hoosier Group and the Irvington Group. He studied the old masters in Europe, and again in 1910, he went back to Europe to do more study. He was employed at Heron School of Art and Design in Indianapolis and retired from there in 1933. He has many well-known murals in Indianapolis. He has nursery rhyme murals at an elementary school in Indianapolis, and he's well known for his murals at City Hospital, also in Indianapolis. Being a very prolific mural painter, he painted the mural that presently resides over the Circle Theater on Monument Circle. Wheeler ended his career teaching high school art classes at Short Ridge, and he continued painting and sketching all the way up to his death in 1953. This painting is titled The Mountain Road. The artist who embroidered this charming piece was Miss Cook, age 12. She embroidered this piece in 1810. Miss Cook was at the M. Baker Seminary in Washington, Pennsylvania when this work was produced. 
It appears to have been painted partially on silk. Miss Cook was the grandmother of J.C. Henry, who was the great-great-grandmother of James Henry McIntyre. This piece of embroidery was gifted to the Eckert Public Library in 1983 by Georgia Hines in memory of Helen McIntyre Bird. Helen was James McIntyre's aunt and Miss Cook's great-granddaughter. This lovely oil on canvas is titled Early Fall Landscape, painted in 1936. It is signed by someone named R. Chambers, and it's quite a mystery we have not been able to find out in our research, except that we know R. Chambers was a female artist. It's in the original frame. It's signed in the lower right-hand corner. It was purchased from the Brown County Art Gallery by one of our donors, Dr. Kenneth and Jeannie Lang. Its origin came through an estate sale. It was located in Nashville, Indiana when it was purchased. And that's about all we know about our chambers. Anyone know any more? I would love to have that research. The Eckert Public Library is privileged to own two pieces by Lee Oda Loop. The first piece, which is titled Zinnias and Copper, and the second piece, which is titled Asters and Petunias. As you can see, Leota Loop was very fond of florals. She was an active artist and she was a renowned instructor in Brown County, Indiana. She sold her first sketch when she was only at the age of 10 and as a teenager she earned money painting flowers on women's dresses. It's often reported that her first paintbrushes were chicken feathers. She used ink for paint and grocer's wrapping paper for ground. Loop established herself as an artist in Kokomo, moved to Brown County in the mid-1930s, and painted landscapes, but is best known for her florals, which she insisted be painted only from fresh bouquets. One of her best landscapes is of her own cabin in Brown County, Indiana, on Artist Drive. She was a member of the Brown County Art Gallery. She exhibited regularly at the Hoosier Salon, and she also studied with the greats, William Forsythe, T.C. Steele, Will Vauter, and Randolph Coates, all associated with the Brown County Art Gallery and Peaceful Valley, as the artist called it there. In 1941, she built a home and an art school with the money she earned from selling her paintings, and the building included rooms for students not only to study but to also live and do their art. This arts and craft umbrella stand, which is unmarked, but I feel it is a Weller piece of pottery, was probably made in the 1930s. Weller pot Pottery was a business in Fultingham, Ohio, founded by Samuel Weller. He started out producing flower pots, bowls, vases, and crocks. Despite a fire which destroyed his factory, he rebuilt and established the world's largest art pottery company. This piece is a green matte glazed piece with a raised floral pattern and leaf banding. We don't know who donated this to the library, but we're very glad that we have this unique umbrella stand. Now we come to the portrait of the library's founder, Charles Eckert. This oil painting formal portrait of Charles Eckert was done by Robert Grafton in a very formal style of the time period. Grafton has a long history and a rich history of painting portraits and murals. Grafton was born in Chicago and he studied art at the Art Institute in Chicago for four years. He then went to Paris to study more about the beauty of coloring, which is characteristics of his later canvases. Returning to Chicago, his paintings were much admired in various circles there. He spent his time then in Holland and other places in Europe before exhibiting in Fort Wayne, Indiana, under the auspices of a local art association. He was offered several commissions as a result of this, and he was commissioned by Mrs. Samuel Hanna, awarded a prize at the Richmond exhibit in 1910, and painted a number of prominent Indiana citizens. He painted George Ade, Indiana's humorist for Purdue University. He was commissioned to do paintings not only from Fort Wayne and Richmond, but from Lafayette, Indiana. His works can be seen in portraits and painters of the governors in Indiana, 
1800 to 1978. In 1921, he moved to Michigan City, Indiana, and he gained wide recognition for his paintings. The portrait of Charles Eckert, which hangs above the fireplace, founder of our library, a family member commissioned when Grafton was in Fort Wayne as a working artist of portraiture. It hangs above the fireplace again, where Eckert can oversee his library and at the same time be seen by all who enter. Robert Grafton also painted this piece for the Eckert Public Library. It was a commissioned piece by Morris Eckert, the son of Charles Eckert. In 1914, he asked him to paint a mural-sized painting that would adorn the public library. Morris wanted to honor his father, Charles, who had fought in the Civil War as part of one of five Union regiments in that engagement. Charles's regiment was the 104th Pennsylvania, and it suffered the greatest loss of men in the Battle of Fair Oaks, Virginia. The Battle of Fair Oaks hangs above the landing to the second floor of the library, the painting is nine foot by 10 foot and it's mounted in a heavy frame of gold leaf design. No one knows how much the commission for this painting cost. He only told his wife about it. The artist Grafton spent several weeks researching this painting in the area near the battlegrounds where he studied the landscape, made several sketches before he even embarked on making this painting. He gathered data relative to the battle in order to make it the most true rendered conception that he could. The painting took nearly three months, and it was painted in his Michigan City studio and completed in Lafayette, Indiana. Grafton, being a very hands-on artist, visited Auburn in April 1915 and was involved in taking the final measurements for this painting. The mural was conserved in 2019 to significantly improve its appearance by removing varnish layers and applying a non-yellowing protective surface coating. The restoration was completed by Deborah Sullivan from New York, and she is a highly experienced conservator of murals and the paintings. Grafton's murals have also decorated many universities, the First National Bank in Fort Wayne, the Illinois State House, and a lakefront mural hangs to the north entrance of a performing arts building in Michigan City, where Grafton lived and worked actively. Many of his treasured works are lovingly preserved on display at the Lighthouse Museum in Michigan City. Now to the Battle of Fair Oaks. The battle was fought May 31st to June 1st, a very short period of time in 1862, in Henrico County, Virginia, seven miles from the capital of Richmond, Virginia. It is also known as the Battle of Seven Pines, Fair Oaks. The battle was named for the fact that there were seven large pine trees clustered at that location. The Union Army was there, the Confederates were there, and there were severely wounded on the first day of the fighting. During the two-day battle, the Northern Army repulsed the Southern Army, but both sides claimed a victory. The North, however, was finally credited for the victory and it raised its morale, and they won several more battles in the Civil War. On the evening of June 1st, Jefferson Davis ordered General Robert E. Lee to take command of the Army. James Ross Bryson was born in Canada. Bryson was an illustrator for calendar companies. This makes this piece very unique. It's a pastel, but it was probably one of the painted women for a calendar. His paintings were considered risque for publication during this time period in the early 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. Many of his images were Art Nouveau women and were sold at an established art gallery. Bryson died in Chicago in 1918, but there's no record of how this beautiful pastel rendering came to be at Eckert Public Library. At some point, it was placed in the attic of the library until then librarian, Serlene Smith, and her husband, Bill, found it and decided to display it in the library. The pastel and the frame were restored, and it now hangs on the stairwell in the library. This beautiful piece is actually untitled, but we like to refer to it as the lady with the red sash. 
experience another rendering of the Park Fountain. Howard Eshelman was a graduate of Auburn High School, and then he attended John Heron Art School in Indianapolis. The watercolor of the Park Fountain was done in the 1970s. Howard is the son of William Eshelman, who is a cousin, or was a cousin, of Charles Eckert. This watercolor was donated to the library by Jody Butler in memory of her parents. Mrs. Garnes, her mother, spent her childhood at 14th and Van Buren Street, which is a block south of the library. Howard Eshelman painted this rendering of the fountain while visiting his sister in Auburn. Mrs. Garnes owned the painting at the time of her death. William Renneker, known as Will, was a beloved person who patronized Eckert. He was an Auburn native, and he grew up and lived on a farm outside of Auburn until 2009. He also spent two years in the Brethren Volunteer Service in Pennsylvania. He received a business degree from Ivy Tech in Fort Wayne, but he never received any formal art training. His education was interesting because it consisted of mail order art catalogs, receiving instructions through books, and other means. The subjects of his paintings are varied. He did landscapes, he did farm vehicles, he painted portraits, and he fashioned those after women he saw in magazines. Will's mediums were mainly watercolor and pastels, and his love of color shows in all his pieces. This winter piece is untitled, but it is definitely a winter mountain scene. We have three other paintings of Will's in the Eckert Public Library located on the main level. It's interesting to note that Will signed his names on his paintings, starting with what I thought was a T, but it ends up being a cross. That is part of his work with the Brethren, I'm sure, or it hails back to that. And he donated several of his paintings, all with the cross and WR for Will Renneker. Charles Eckert, founder of the library, commissioned Gustav Brand a German, to design the stained glass windows for this building. Brand did not deliver them in a timely manner or follow through on his delivery when promised, which made with kind of a contentious relationship with Eckert. But Eckert must have finally approved of the work because they are now a big part of this library. Brand was from Berlin. He studied there. He also studied in Dusseldorf with the great masters. And he was hired to paint the historic scene, the Battle of Gettysburg. That picture was brought to Chicago in 1890 and was exhibited there. He came to the United States, fell in love with Chicago, and stayed there. He also painted murals for numerous schools in the Chicago public school system. 22 of his large oil paintings can still be seen in the Muncie Masonic Lodge, pretty near to us in Muncie, Indiana. Jeannie Cassidy Daring shared her art with the community of Northeast Indiana for four decades. She was born in Chicago and lived all over the country, but settled in Auburn, Indiana and opened the Studio Gallery on West 7th Street. She exhibited her oils, watercolors, and pen and ink drawings in her retail space. She was inspired by nature, and so her landscapes and flowers were the main subjects of her work. This rendering of the DeKalb Courthouse was commissioned by the DeKalb County Bar Association. It was an oil painting to be displayed in the State Association's building in Indianapolis. Jeannie painted quite a few renderings of the courthouse, one of which is in oil, which we will see in a bit. Evelyn Hymack Johnson painted this watercolor of Eckert Public Library on a beautiful spring morning from the front window of Presbyterian Manse, which was directly across the street. She was inspired by the architecture of the library. Evie became interested in art after she took instruction from Joseph Robel at the South Bend Art Center. She graduated from a hospital school of nursing in New Jersey and worked at DeKalb Memorial Hospital on the surgery floor, but she loved painting and she was adventurous and enjoyed also antiquing and writing. She was an avid traveler and she spent time hiking Mount Kilimanjaro, trekking from Lake Michigan to the Gulf of Mexico and to many other places. Please visit this charming watercolor on the stairwell at the library. 
This unique acrylic mural in the children's department of the Eckerd Public Library was done freehand by artist Pat Delagrange in 2008. Delagrange is a well-known member of the artistic community in DeKalb County. She's a former owner of the Busy Brush and one of the original artists at the Atrium, where she had a working studio along with several other artists. Her murals are found in community churches, in apartment buildings, and in Willie's Cozy Nook in Fort Wayne. She also has various other murals located in Angola and Warsaw. She describes her style as inspiration as I go. Jose Orego was born in Manila. He was educated and worked as a lawyer. He decided to come to the United States to study graphic arts in New York City at Parsons School of Design. After a job of cartooning, he decided to launch his career as a children's author and book illustrator. Books you might know include Leo the Late Bloomer and Rockabye Crocodile. It's obvious that Arego had the artistic skills and the imagination to reach children. He visited DeKalb County Schools in 1999 through 2000 to read some of his children's books and entertain the children with his colorful illustrations. While he was in Auburn, he gifted this large truck drawing to the Eckert Public Library, and it was accepted by the library in the children's department at the time. Nancy Irvine Kupka, an Indiana artist residing in Auburn, was inspired at a young age by her father who worked in wood and clay to pursue being creative. So her parents enrolled her at John Heron Art Institute in Indianapolis. Kupka was accepted into the Hoosier Salon in 1970. She's had numerous gallery showings in the Indiana Artist Club and the Indiana Heritage Arts, Brown County Artists Guild, and many more. She paints in an impressionistic style, often in pointillism, which is small pinpointed brush strokes. She does scenes of the rural countryside. Her works sparkle, as you can see, with color and by using the small dots and brush strokes, the eye of the observer is caught in these scenes of optical mixes. This painting, titled A Loft, resides in the children's department and is a rendering of brilliantly colored balloons, a favorite memory of Kupka's when she painted these high on a hill in southern Indiana. She could hear the sound of the hissing fire pots and meet the pilots and explore the balloons up close and get an inspiration for this painting. Paintings by Nancy Irvine Kupka can be found in private collections in Franklin, Indiana, in the college, and in Indiana State Museum in Indianapolis. Now we're outside looking at art at the Eckerd Public Library. Yes, it's hidden in plain sight, but right in the courtyard. A statue made by James Havens of Woodfield, Ohio lovingly called Miss Virginia the Librarian. She stands reading outside on the grounds of the library. This statue is made for Ginger Post, a patron of the library for 75 plus years, who wanted to see this statue have a permanent home. It was inspired by the National Library logo that pays homage to librarians everywhere. It is made of stainless steel, and that presents a challenge because the beauty of making things in stainless steel is also difficult to accomplish. The stainless steel was cut and welded by James Havens and has his trademark polished surface. The lens had first made a bust of the logo but decided to expand it to a full figure holding a book. The sculpture was part of the Auburn Arts Commission 2012 outdoor exhibit, Sculptures on the Square, Three, the Magic of Metal. Originally exhibited an art prize in Grand Rapids in 2012, it was titled The Librarian. There are five other duplicate sculptures of The Librarian that can be found Alaska, Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Havens owns the Havens Studio and Rose Foundry. He still teaches welding at the Community College in Owens Community in Ohio. His permanent sculptures can be seen throughout the United States, Indiana, and Nicaragua. We so enjoy having Miss Virginia, the librarian, in our courtyard. Behind me is a library park fountain. Gifted to Auburn by Charles Eckert, the founder of the library, this working fountain is located in the library park. 
Charles Eckert purchased this in 1911 from J.L. Mott Ironworks of New York for close to $2,000. The ornamental fountain is 19 feet tall. It has an upper, middle, and lower basin. The figures at the top represent two boys trying to grasp onto a duck. They sit at the top of the fountain. Water sprays from the duck's bill and continues to escape into the other two basins through the goat's mouths that surround them. In 1997, the fountain had its first restoration through a donation from the Willinar Foundation. It also was restored and had various things done to it in 2020. This fountain is listed on the Smithsonian Register of Historic Statuary. Coming back to Weller Pottery, we've already seen the umbrella stand in the main library and now we're at Willinar Center looking at another piece of Weller Pottery. This piece is actually called a Griora. It's a pattern with a glaze and two handles and it's actually incised on the bottom saying Weller Pottery so we know for sure it was made by Weller. Its black background has an applied green and brown glaze on top and it's called the splatter pattern around the body of the vessel. It also has a top opening. In 1904, Weller displayed a massive model pottery at the St. Louis Exposition. He also brought a seven and one half foot Aurelian vase to the exposition. Needless to say, Weller Pottery took the gold medal in the Arts and Crafts exhibit that year. Jeannie Cassidy Gehring did several renderings of the DeKalb County Courthouse. This one is an oil commissioned by Zigrid Duncan for her husband's dental office. Dr. F.A. Duncan donated this painting to Willinar Genealogy in 2002. His patients enjoyed it for many years in the office and it now can be seen by many library visitors. This is the courthouse in a winter setting. Curtis Van Dusen was born in Albany, New York, moved to Michigan, and then settled eventually in Auburn, Indiana. His 38 years in Auburn included being superintendent of the sheet metal department of the Auburn Automobile Company until it moved to Connersville, Indiana. He retired in 1932. He was a frequent visitor to the library and lived on West 11th Street. His hobby was building model ships, and some were made of scrap metal that he undoubtedly got at his job. Van Dusen made a model ship that was always by the main entrance to the library, which at that time was the original front door. This is that model ship. An interesting fact is that he made a small wooden model of a whale boat with oars and a spear with the name NRA on the bow, which he gifted to President Franklin Roosevelt in 1934. It now resides in the Franklin D. Roosevelt Presidential Library and Museum in Hyde Park, New York. It is inscribed underneath in gilt, and it says, wishing you a happy birthday and a lot of cooperation and re-election. A past Auburn resident with the presidential link and a link to the automobile heritage of Auburn. This sculpture by Dale Enox dominates the entrance to the William H. Willenard Genealogy Center. Its title is Tree of Life, and it was made in 2001 and 2002 by an award-winning artist from Indiana. This work of art was commissioned by Everett Public Library. It's hand-carved, it's Indiana limestone, and it spans 20 feet of wall space here. It's divided into 12 sections, that combined a stretch eight feet wide, and it weighs two tons. Enox is renowned for creating sculptures that grace public and private spaces. He likes to work in stone, but he often adds small details of copper, bronze, and steel. His work can be seen in many public areas, Lincoln Life Corporation, Indiana University, the University of Notre Dame, Fort Wayne Museum of Art, and many other public spaces. Dale has participated in exhibitions all over the United States. He graduated from Indiana University, and he continues to reside in the limestone-rich city of Bloomington. 